So we've talked about a whole bunch of techniques here from radial velocities, um, transits, microlensing, direct imaging. Could there be any new techniques, actually different techniques that we haven't tried yet? Another way to find these planets around other stars? Well, there's one that's just hanging around that hasn't quite materialized, which is astrometry. That's looking at how something's position changes over time. So in the same way that a planet causes a star's velocity to wobble, of course, the star itself wobbles in the sky. And it may seem crazy, but, you know, with the incredible resolution we can do, especially with interferometry or space-based missions, we can get to the point to see that wobble. And the wobble is nice, because if you have the wobble this way and the velocity this way, then you don't have that problem of the inclination. You do know it. So you can get rid of that problem. Yes, and hopefully in a, a couple of months, the European Space Agency is going to be launching the Gaia space probe. So by the time you view this, it should be up. Hopefully it doesn't blow up on the launch pad. Yes, please. Um, the space probe is designed to measure the positions of stars very accurately. The, its prim primary goal is to uh, measure the positions you know, six months apart as it uh, goes around the sun, and therefore use uh, parallax to measure distances. So it should measure distances to uh, hundreds of thousands of stars in our galaxy, and that's fundamental to stellar astrophysics. But also, it might well pick out the size sideways wobbles of some fraction, and they're estimating they might be able to find 100 planets this technique. And these will be the really nearby planets, presumably, so you'll really get a good snapshot of these nearby planets uh, using this technique. The sort of planets it's going to find are the same sort of things that the radial velocity approach finds, because once again you look at the reflex motion of the star, so all the same biases happen. So it's not going to find a new population of planets, probably, though I'm very happy to be yeah. surprised, yep. uh, but it'll give us the full three-dimensional motion of these things you can follow up with radial velocities. So that's exciting. Now, one could take this the next stop further, and you could do a dedicated mission for planets where you would literally do the interferometry. So you actually probably can't afford to put a big enough telescope in space, but you can imagine putting separated mirrors in the same way that radio astronomers combine the radio waves from two telescopes and do the wave interference to figure out how big something is. You could imagine doing that in optical light in space and really getting this measurements to be incredibly fine. Yes, and indeed, a number of proposals have been made for things. There was a mission called the SIM, the Space Interferometry Mission, which had multiple mirrors on a normal boom, and it got quite a long way through the design yeah. phase before it was cancelled by NASA. And there were even more ambitious things, uh, like the Terrestrial Planet Finder or the Darwin, which were uh, actually free-floating space telescopes that would... So you'd have a big telescope floating in space over here, another one which might be thousands of kilometres away, and they would bounce lasers back and forth between them to measure their precise position and bounce the light they received between them and combined to the middle to get this incredible accuracy. So Very megalomaniac yeah, telescopes. Yeah, so those are uh, serious uh, futuristic type facilities. Maybe not going to happen in the next decade or two. But te not technologically, it is possible. So one can imagine building these things to really get down and, 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 and probe no nearby solar systems and really see what they're made out of.